All right, so do you love traveling all around the world and finding yourself in new exotic, strange places? Oh, sure. Well, that's a little expensive, though, don't you think? Mm -hmm. But a new game may be the next best thing. Well, Alex, I heard this game is actually pretty addicting. Yes, you definitely need to set aside time to play this game because it's going to suck you in. Causes 748 damage, He's and he will win. He is your world champion. Watch this. GeoGuessr. Even if you've never played it, you've almost certainly watched someone play it. The aim is simple, to guess where you are in the world based on the street view image in front of you. So let's go Chile. This is Cambodia. I kind of like Virginia here. Next one, Andorra. I've always said that GeoGuessr isn't a game. For me, it's something more fundamental and pure and simple. I'm going to plonk you somewhere, you're going to look around, and then you're going to tell me where, exactly where you are. Whatever you want to do, it's like, it's a game that you get to cater around your own interests and whatever you want, and that's the beauty of it. From the imagination of a developer in Sweden, to becoming a phenomenon attracting millions of views and tens of thousands of euros in prize money, let's look at the history of GeoGuessr. The story of GeoGuessr starts with Street View, Google's project to map the roads of the world using real imagery captured by 360 degree cameras mounted onto cars. Street View began its life as a Google funded project at Stanford University, which started in 2001 and was merged into Google Street View in 2006, with the first imagery in the US being launched by 2007. The potential of Street View for geography games had already been noticed by some developers, with games such as MapCrunch, in which one must find their way to the closest airport from a random location, and Pursued, where one must figure out the name of the city they have dropped in. GeoGuessr founder Anton Vallen initially conceived of GeoGuessr as a random Street View location generator before having the idea to turn it into a game. Shortly after, Anton shared a basic version of the game in the web dev subreddit and released the full version in May 2013 after some feedback and tinkering. The game went viral almost instantly. However, for the vast majority of users, GeoGuessr was something of a novelty to try a handful of times, and its popularity fell to a relatively low, steady level. Unlike the colourful, high-resolution Street View imagery we're used to seeing today, the early days of the game featured Google's more basic camera quality, known as Gen 1 and Gen 2, with a handful of countries available in higher quality Gen 3. The scoring in the early game was also different, with 6,500 points being available in a given round, as opposed to 5,000 now, and repeat locations were fairly common. GeoGuessr made a modest mark in online communities at first. The GeoGuessr subreddit was created in May 2013, and YouTubers such as Northern Lion released some of the earliest content related to the game around the same time. A YouTuber named Rahul released the first tips and tricks video in July 2013, including tips on which countries have coverage and differences in road lines between the Americas and Europe. At this point in GeoGuessr's history, virtually no metas, such as utility poles or Google cars, were being used other than players' general knowledge of languages, customs, landscapes and place names. To illustrate this, in the following clip, the white bollards with red stripes are now known as a basic clue for Ecuador. However, clues like this were not widely known in GeoGuessr's early days. It's a cool location, but I don't know where it is. For some years, Reddit was practically the only GeoGuessr community in existence until Discord servers started to become more popular around 2018. Reddit threads from this era included some user-made challenges and threads seeking basic tips on tricky countries. This post from April 2015 by moderator Freckles, who was an extremely important part of the early community, aggregates some early metas which have been used by the community ever since. The Reddit community was starting to experiment with different ways to play the game, as were some members of the speedrunning community, such as Havard and Mumrick, who had also begun to explore different possibilities within GeoGuessr. I think, I think we started in end of 2016. Every day we sit in discords, but when it was speedrunning related, we sit in discords and we like have a game that we are either playing or we're like trying to find glitches and stuff in. So I just said, ah, we can play this find the find, guess where you are game. Back then, it didn't really have any game modes. So we started like doing other things. And obviously it immediately the thought was, can, is this speedrunnable? And uh, yeah, obviously we just started getting better and better, making a discord. Let's quickly define the key playstyles that were emerging in GeoGuessr. In moving games, a player can move down the street to search for information and attempt to pinpoint their exact location, and such games are usually time limited. 
In no moving games, the player can pan around but cannot move down the street from their starting location. NMPZ allows players to only see the starting frame with no moving, panning or zooming allowed. At this point in GeoGuessr, all games had moving enabled by default and it was down to the honesty of players to abide by challenge rules, including no moving and NMPZ. The ability to enforce these modes in-game did not appear until late 2020. The competitive player base around this time was very small, with only a few relatively casual challenge series being hosted on the subreddit. This included the Reddit Daily Challenge, a 5 minute per round moving challenge which began in November 2015. Despite the low player count, some of the discoveries and creations from this era would change the course of the game forever. A player known as Mapper created a custom made map which started with 50 locations in each country and grew to tens of thousands of hand-picked locations. This map was called a diverse world and remains probably the most famous GeoGuessr map ever. If you didn't even have ADW, if you didn't have Mapper making maps, what would this game be today? All these things really did make such a big impact in the game. The rationale for the creation of a diverse world was that the official world map had a heavy bias towards coverage dense areas such as the eastern US and major European cities. Mapper wanted to redress the balance and show players other interesting countries and areas and a diverse world would remain status quo for several years. As we saw previously, after initial intrigue in the game, GeoGuessr's popularity remained at a fairly steady low level from 2013 to 2017. Beginning in 2015, but gaining more traction by 2018, GeoWizard had started a YouTube channel, showing how a naturally able player with good geography knowledge could make extremely good guesses and produce content worthy moments. Back then I was just trying to get a perfect score, just literally just get a perfect score. Stick some music on and it would probably take me like two hours, you know, an hour and a half to get a perfect score. Fast forward about two years and I must have been, must have had a lot of time on my hands and started getting back into it but trying to get a perfect score in a watchable time on YouTube because I looked on YouTube and I guess I was looking for opportunities to, to make a YouTube channel you know I, I had a few different I tried a few different things and I thought you know what there is a gap here I couldn't find a video the only one I could find of someone getting a perfect score was was about an hour and a half so I thought if I can get, you know, half an hour, then surely a lot of people would, would watch that. And then I got that, my first world, world version. Yeah. And there's the little road that joins. So we've got to be there. We've got to be there. I'm doing it. Here's the stream, look. I'm doing it. Here we go. Yes. Oh, I can finally live my life again. <laughs> a few views trickled in for that. And it's quite hard. As, as you know, it's quite hard to get to your first thousand views. And it got there fairly quickly, relatively quickly. And then it got shared on Reddit and bumped up to like 50,000 views. And at that point, I thought, right, I can invest some time into this channel, you know, doing something I really enjoy. Over the preceding couple of years, the quality and extent of coverage on Street View had been slowly improving, giving the game a greater sense of completeness, randomness and true exploration. The ultra high quality Gen 4 imagery began to appear from 2017 and it would gradually replace lower quality imagery in many countries over the next few years. Combined with this improvement in Street View coverage, GeoWizard's content was proving to be so popular that the vast majority of the player base who joined GeoGuessr between 2018 and 2021 did so through stumbling upon his videos. Going into 2019, we would now see a significant rise in the availability and variety of GeoGuessr content, primarily on YouTube and Twitch. On Twitch, early GeoGuessr streamers such as Purple Frog and Junkos, to name only a couple, were demonstrating the potential of live streams for GeoGuessr, which would later reach their peak in COVID. A handful of newer YouTubers, including myself and Chicago Geographer, were also starting to carve a niche somewhere in the middle ground between GeoWizard's conceptual video ideas and the community and challenge focused videos of others such as Radox and Sagittarius. Next round is in Eastern Russia. Map making was also growing as a useful endeavour for the community, 
and it is no coincidence that some of the best map makers from this era, such as Wolf Trekker, Simi, Topotic, Debre, and Alok, are still highly respected players today. Building on Mapper's work, the GeoGuessr community was experimenting with the balance of urban and rural locations, alongside the general difficulty of locations and distributions across countries. Other map makers, including Rolling Hill, JHK, and Slash Peak, would continue to tinker with these aspects of GeoGuessr maps. Around this time, the GeoGuessr developers were noticing the potential of competitive game modes and introduced pro leagues, invite only leagues with a set number of seeds across a given time period, with a live leaderboard showing the ranking of participants. GeoGuessr developers also released the Daily Challenge, a daily three minute moving seed with a public leaderboard. The moving aspect of the game did, however, receive a significant blow as a result of external factors. As shown in the difference between these clips, a change on Google's side meant that moving down a road was now significantly slower, disincentivizing the game mode for many players. Regarding no moving, we have to remember that the development of Meta and the availability of learning resources at this time barely scratched the surface of what exists today. Many of the individuals who became prominent players during this era brought a wealth of their own knowledge into the community, such as Simi and Wolf Trekker with architecture, Granis and Mr. Bearded Bread with their knowledge of Russia and the US, and Pizza Guy with his extraordinary knowledge of geography and urban environments. Around 2019, some of the feats achieved by the very best players were starting to demonstrate that extremely impressive things were possible in GeoGuessr. The concept of a no-moving country streak, where a player must guess the correct country as many times in a row as possible, was conceived in 2018 by Pizza Guy and T-Bone. Pizza Guy would go on to achieve a country streak over 100 in 2019, a feat that was far, far beyond its time. Granis would achieve a perfect score in Russia, precisely pinpointing five locations in three minutes. It is impossible to overstate just how influential these feats were. Without these prodigious players raising the bar early on, the standards we're now used to seeing would not even be dreamed of. As a result of the growing player base, availability of content, competitions, and sharing of tips in dedicated Discord servers, GeoGuessr was firmly establishing itself as a community, and the general skill level was ready to skyrocket. I think about the people that paved the road for GeoGuessr, right? Like I come from a very privileged point of the game where at the point of time where I started playing the game in 2021, there were people that laid the brick already and I wouldn't be able to be the creator or like have the reach I have today if, you know, the GCs, the RCs, the ALOCs, the Simis, they didn't lay that in the countless more people that I wouldn't even be able to name, you know, everyone. If that wasn't that road was already paved, the game is nothing without the initial like brick. There was, however, a notable setback to the growth GeoGuessr was experiencing. In August 2019, GeoGuessr faced an existential threat as a game and as a business when Google Maps raised its API costs, essentially charging GeoGuessr 14 times more than it had previously for usage of the Street View software. There was genuine concern at the time that GeoGuessr may not be able to continue to operate. A well-known French streamer, Antoine Daniel, had also brought another huge influx of players, which was putting high strain on GeoGuessr's finances as it pays Google for every use of the underlying software. Despite the panic, GeoGuessr managed to ride the storm by making unlimited play require a fairly small paid subscription. The growth in play account that followed in the next era would steady things further with a significant revenue base. In 2020, many aspects of life came to a standstill as a result of the pandemic. People around the world found themselves indoors and cut off from their usual activities or routines, and as with many other games, GeoGuessr experienced a boom as people looked for hobbies and communities to explore from indoors. This coincided with some key additions from the GeoGuessr developers, including the enablement of no moving and no moving panning or zooming options alongside the first competitive mode on the website, Battle Royale Countries, in which players would be eliminated if they were the last player to identify the correct country. Is this Australia or New Zealand? Oh my god. I'm going to lock in New Zealand and if it's wrong then I lose. Probably. Okay, got it. So win. Covid hit. I was in school. I got sent home from school, stuck inside, finished up my semester, and then decided to take time off from school. Taking like quarantine really seriously. Kind of what drew me to GeoGuessr specifically was this idea of, you know, you're stuck inside. What's a beautiful way to like still see the world? I had watched GeoWizard for a couple years, kind of like casually as most do. 
So I one day was like, oh, well, maybe I should just like stream Geo Guesser, even though I'm only streaming Rocket League. And at this point, I'd probably only been streaming for about like three weeks. And that got me just to to start meeting a bunch of other people in the community, started getting super hype. And I was learning a lot about the game from playing and also from people coming in my chats and teaching me things. The influx of players and the facilitation of competitive modes led to a boom in streaming and rapid discovery of new metas, specific clues which allow players to more easily identify where they are without moving. Where no moving country streaks above 30 or 40 had been beyond the reach of all but a few players, this era of GeoGuessr featured massive collaborative efforts, often streamed live on Twitch, to discover country and even region specific metas related to poles, road markings, Google cars, vegetation and architecture. Colombian cross. Nope. <laughs> it's Alb. It's Alb. It's Albania. Hey, hey there. <laughs> hey there, water tanks. YouTubers such as Geo Peter and Harrier were focusing some of their efforts on easily digestible tips videos, which further increase the accessibility of the game. In Denmark, you will see lots of these signs, like with this this like metallic border around them. Meanwhile, sites like GeoHints compiled information about useful clues such as architecture, bollards, poles, and phone numbers. We would also see the formal introduction of world records as a concept in GeoGuessr. It's Mexico or Guatemala, but I don't know which. I'm kind of leaning towards Guatemala here, to be honest. Mm, I don't know. I think I have to go for it though. No, it was Mexico. Oh, 66th Street, okay. GeoTips was the first website to host world record leaderboards, where individual high scores or country streaks were recorded, alongside group-assisted country streaks often streamed on Twitch. Some of the most well-known people in the community became active through these assisted formats on stream. By the end of my streaming career, pretty much every GeoGuessr stream was like a world record attempt, and it got so hype because Basically, what happened is me and this guy like AG Blad, as well as other people eventually, like Diono eventually toward the end of my streaming career and stuff like that, we all started sort of like competing as communities for these records. You know, NMBZ Country Streaks on ADW and boom, I, I get the, the first place, right? It's like now, for instance, like AG Blad's community or Diono's would just be like, okay, we got to beat that now, right? And so it was just this like, cycle of one-upping each other and so every stream was like super hype like i'd hop in the stream and i'd be like guys ag blatt like broke our record for this with many people spending much of their time online during the pandemic it would become more common for geocaster players to play together in voice chats on discord and the bonds in the community were growing stronger and the first two or three games who was that who is that? Look at the look at it. Look at the location. <laughs> read it. <laughs> read it to me. Read it to me. <laughs> what did it say? Bro, that's so funny. It goes the same direction too, basically, or almost. We would also see greater variety in live streamed competitions, mostly small in nature, but engaging enough to show the potential of live tournaments. GeoWizard and Sunken City streams, alongside the GeoPre tournaments, were all notable examples of live streamed competitive play. Yeah, so during that area when Sunken was streaming was really when the competitive scene I really I feel like that really started to flourish because before then the only real like head-to-head -head challenges that had been happening were on Reddit. Um, and this was like a basically like live uh, way to play with other people. I think when COVID struck, I might have this wrong, but I think that's when I started streaming on Twitch. And that is when all these characters popped up. People like Polly and Topotic, RC. That's when I was like, oh, wow, there really is um, some great players out there. But, but more to the point, a real community. And I think I, I hosted some tournaments, probably 2021 we're talking. And I only started streaming because I had so much time because of COVID, <laughs> no time to do adventures. And when I started hosting the tournaments, that's when I truly realized, oh God, I am nowhere near the top uh, of, of the standard of GeoGuessr. But simultaneously, lots and lots of people were taking it up, starting to play and quickly getting very, very good. 
As the ability levels and stakes in the game were starting to grow, controversy was not too far behind. GeoGuessr would soon see its first major cheating scandal involving a highly respected top player who was secretly playing rounds 1 to 4 on another account to reveal the locations. Being a browser game in nature, GeoGuessr has always been a relatively easy game to cheat in and the competitive aspect relies heavily on trust. That was really disappointing for me because it burst that bubble a bit of like, oh, we've got this great competitive arena here and cheating hadn't really... It had been talked about, but I thought it... I didn't think it could be that undetectable. You know, I didn't think someone of that higher status who was that respected and backed up by fellow players could then turn out to be a cheat. My thing about cheating is that like, it's, it's like, it's just disrespectful in the sense of like, there's a lot of people that spend a lot of time to get really good to make these guesses and for someone to try and bypass that, I think it's just disrespectful, obviously. Part of the reason the GeoGuessr community is so close is because of the trust required in fellow players, and incidents of cheating naturally prompt very negative reactions due to the hard work that goes into the knowledge base. On the subject of the knowledge base, in 2021, Polly and South By, both notable players, founded Plonkit, a hub for competitive play, world records and learning resources. With significant input from major figures like Dallin, Bloom and Lagzi, and later Scribero and Dennis, Plonkit was perfectly set up for popularity and growth within the community. The world record leaderboard quickly became, and remains to this day, highly competitive, with country streaks reaching new heights and the fastest perfect score speedruns containing very little room for error. Some notable world record moments included Blinky's 25k of a diverse world, precisely pinpointing five random locations in two minutes and two seconds. A hedge streak, where the aim is to score over 20,000 points no moving as many times in a row as possible, was submitted by Lupus, containing a streak of 126 games. With Lupus and other assisting players painstakingly scanning maps to try and solve every difficult round, the attempt took around 35 hours and the world record format was subsequently retired due to the excessive time requirements this placed on record reviewers. With the active and competitive nature of the leaderboard, the huge efforts to make the Discord server interactive and the high quality learning resources, Plonkit became the go-to community for a new generation of GeoGuessr players looking to quickly rise towards the top. Another content creator was ready to make a huge impact on social media and change the course of GeoGuessr once again. Initially focusing on short form content on TikTok, Rainbolt's videos showed the now uncanny abilities of top GeoGuessr players, and with his iconic, fast, deadpan style, the videos quickly went viral. 1v1 the world's fastest Google Maps player. Like June 2021 is when I like really started to play, like everyone, GeoWizard. I remember sitting back on the couch and like, that's the coolest thing I think I've ever seen in my life, you know? After that point, um, I would just play GeoGuessr from like 6 p.m. to like 1 a.m. Before I even started playing though, I spent a lot of time watching YouTube videos. I would watch Wolf Trekker on YouTube. I played the game for like eight months and then I started streaming um, because I got like a really good NMPZ record or a 24K 10 second ADW. And back in the day, that was like, the coveted only thing I ever wanted in life was that. And I remember like for like a week straight, I like maybe, maybe the happiest I've ever been was getting that. And then I just uploaded it and I just got a big reaction from the community. I started posting videos and streaming on Twitch. You know, the classic 20, 30 people back in the day, you know, you had the Phineas's. Fast forward like three months, I made kind of like my New Year's resolution to start posting kind of like TikToks, like consistently. And then those kind of went, you know, ran its course and did its thing, and I started, you know, doing um, tournaments. A new wave of players was starting to join the game, and with his rapidly growing platform, Rainbolt quickly channeled this into growing the competitive side of GeoGuessr and showcasing the best talent from around the world. Let me give some rundown of the tournament real quick before we start. But basically, this is a 2v2 tournament. We have pre-signups where only pro players are allowed. It's 2v2, um, ACW, new map. In these Twitch tournaments, with considerable prize money and thousands of viewers, we would see an astonishing level of skill and dramatic matchups that would inspire the top players to reach new heights. Legendary players mentioned previously, such as Radu, Topotic, and Debre, were coming out of retirement, while other players like Jupa, Boki, Harmless, Bag, and Consus were continuing or starting to establish themselves at the top. My tournaments grew as the skill level of players grew, 
and you could see like shifts in players winning like live week over week. So like you would see, you know, in the, the beginning of the tourneys, you would see the Kurt Steaks, you know, winning consistently every weekend, week and week. And then like fast forward like five months and it was like Jupa went on like a massive run, you know? And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, now we have JHK bag consists, you know? I don't Two, one, I scared to scared. red, oh count. my God. Oh, Kodiak no, no, found no, it. That's game. And that's game. That's no, Demetrius there. <laughs> It's Ethiopia on the sign. Wait, is this Russian? Never. It's a uh, Turkey. It's Turkey. It's uh, Red team is not seeing it. Red team is very far away. Oh no! Oh no! Red team does not see it. Wait, Blue team's they there. They could lose. They could lose. They don't lose. It's okay. very. You know. Trichter is not here. I don't think Wait. that's enough. What? That's enough. Yeah, that, that's, that's enough. Oh, oh my God! They've oh, done it. My oh God. my God! They've done it. Yeah. Oh, oh no! God. A strong cast of helpers and co-commentators, including Der Ziggy, JHK, Bloom, CG, Diono, Snail, Jalotris, Chumley, Pando, Zigzag, and Mipt, ensured the tournaments maintained a high level of integrity and entertainment. Bearing in mind that these were team tournaments, here we can see an interesting breakdown of individuals' performances across the 38 weeks of these competitions, with Steak, Debre, Consus, Bag, and Mipt making up the top five. It's crazy how, like, I feel like there's, like, chapters in the in the community and that feels like a, a closed chapter like those type of tournaments at least but yeah it was a good time somewhat in parallel with the rainbow tournaments in early 2022 geogesa had launched their official ranked 1v1 mode known as competitive jewels with initially only a moving format jewels would pitch players head to head in an elo style competitive structure using damage multipliers to make each round more deadly than the one before the competitive leaderboard has been plagued with cheaters since its inception this is the global top 10 with, surprise, surprise, Snorlax at the top. Snorlax is known to have cheated in the past. Is he cheating now? Nobody knows. He says he's not. It's, it's all a mess. Nevertheless, great players like YouTuber Jake Lyons have been able to rise towards the top of the game mode and produce great content as a result. The prevalence of cheating has created a slight atmosphere of mistrust in official duels, and unknown players who appear to overperform are often treated with suspicion until they can prove themselves. In terms of overall domination of the Moving Jewels leaderboard, a special mention here for the very gifted French player Blinky. No Move and NMBZ Jewels were later added to the roster in early 2024, with Castrola and Radu currently dominating. The concept of damage within Jewels and Team Jewels, with players taking health from their opponents based on guest distance, would now shift the focus of the community towards big countries such as Russia, Brazil, Canada, USA, Australia, Indonesia and Mexico, where huge points were up for grabs. Accurate region guessing within big countries would now become the main focus of top GeoGuessr players. Small communities were breaking away to research and share, or indeed keep private, the latest discoveries about vegetation, poles and coverage meta such as seasonal variations and Google car types. Players would collate their discoveries within documents, sometimes in excess of 100 pages, to share knowledge about specific countries. Compared with only two to three years previously, the amount of resources has risen exponentially and is now almost impossible to keep up with. Extensive knowledge of big countries like Russia and Indonesia would help players such as Finbar and Lemon break through into the next season of Rainbow Tournaments, and we would see individuals posting state streaks into the triple digits for Australia, one of the countries that has been mastered more than most. Keeping up with many of these metas himself, a YouTuber known as Zigzag would see huge growth throughout this era, keeping thousands within the GeoGuessr community hooked with his entertaining formats sprinkled with extremely useful tips. Towards the end of this era, an interesting thing happened. Mappa deleted the classic map A Diverse World mentioned previously in protest at the wider monetization of the game by its owners, including the availability of avatar assets for sale within the GeoGuessr shop. A Diverse World would be replaced by a community world, a map organized by Mate Potato, with contributions from many prominent players. In terms of community contributions, the overall efforts to modify the game through browser scripts were also allowing content and competitive play to thrive. Blink mode, allowing 0.1 second rounds, greatly helped short form content, while map making tools, quiz websites, map modifications and country street counters were key for the user experience. Major credit goes to individuals such as Anna, Emily, Komu, Jupa, Miracle Whips, Maka, Mr. American Mike, Vic the Turtle, E. Chandler and Dr. Pass who have spent time bringing these features to the game. And all the tools that the community has come together to 
to build all the developers, Anna and Emily and Slash P and Roland Hill and Mr. American Mike, they created mapmaking.app and Emily's amazing uh, resource site. You know, all these tools that people are not, you know, charging for, they're doing mm -hmm. it for love of the game. And I think that's an amazing and underappreciated part of uh, GeoGuessr. The next and most recent seismic shift for GeoGuessr would be the introduction of live tournaments, attracting tens of thousands of viewers and with five-figure prize pools. The French community, which is centred around a multi-division league with a focus on moving and pinpointing, put its organisational skills to great use in organising the first in-person tournament, a Team World Cup hosted in Paris for teams of three to four. Oh my God. The famous French content creator, Antoine Daniel, who regularly plays GeoGuessr on stream, made an incredible gesture to the community by sponsoring and hosting the event. The day involved a somewhat exhausting 15 hours of matches, where group games and early knockouts were played concurrently, while the semi-finals onwards were broadcast exclusively back-to-back. -back. Radu, Make Potato and Toro defeated Jake Lyons, Calamity, Tall Impala and myself in one side of the bracket, while Ottawa, Gabriel, Kratzo and Clément Ferrand were defeated by Blinky, Kodiak and Mackham. In the extremely highly skilled final, Blinky, Kodiak and Mackham proved too hard to beat and were crowned as winners. The success of this event showed the French community in a great light, whose approach to organising and map making for tournaments is very different to the international community, offering a bit of variety to the competitive side of the game. Although the formats were slightly more on the esoteric side, this event set an extremely high benchmark for in-person events. In late 2023, GeoGuessr would host its own official solo World Cup in Stockholm, with some of the world's absolute best facing each other in moving, no moving, and then MPZ. The congregation of so many of the community's key figures from around the world cemented many of the friendships within the game, and the high production value attracted significant attention, ranging from news media to some of the world's biggest streamers. Five seconds. Oh my God, Three. time's ticking down. Two. He's gonna lock it in. One. Trebola. Wait. He 5K'd! Wait, what? Chabotic 5 k Oh, Chabotic 5K! But you're still in it! I genuinely never really thought that this would happen. And so for all my friends that I spent years talking to every single day on Discord about the game that we all have a passion for, and then to translate that friendship to person, I, it's like one of those feelings like the October uh, World Cup last year. It's That's not something you can recreate ever, or like replicate ever again. The group stage on day one featured these 24 legendary players and the top two from each group would automatically qualify for the second day, while third place would go head-to-head -head for a spot in the finals. Jalotris, Debre, Blinky, Fao, Radu, Lenly, Trebota and Consus were the players who advanced to the second day on the big stage, with hundreds in attendance and tens of thousands watching online. The level of gameplay on show was, in a word, spectacular, with some of the most memorable GeoGuessr matches and moments of all time. I was quite busy, but I did manage to watch uh, you know, a game here and there. It was uh, just insane. But I couldn't help but watch it and think, oh my God, I would hate to be in that chair right now. I would stuff this up so bad. The question is, you have to go pretty north here. We have the green trees, green hills. I would go pretty north. Finding a bridge in Turkey, this, that might be difficult to, to know There's exactly which oh, one. Along he's in. He oh. knows he has it. He got it. Oh my God. Round four. That's the 5 5 k Semi-finalists Radu and Blinky battled for a spot in the final with Blinky sealing a 3-2 win in the most highly skilled match imaginable, which showcased the absolute pinnacle of moving and no moving gameplay. Honestly, this is probably the closest possible semi you could get. Do end up going there. Oh, into Montreal. Almost. Oh, both getting pretty close here. We have Montreal and an Ottawa guess. Okay, and, and it ends did, up being... Did he... Whoa, was that a 5k? Oh my god, he kicked things it's, off. It's, it's, dude, we'll call it a 5k, my god. Right out the gates, Blinky just... He just came out the gates with, like, an insane moving gameplay. Like, I honestly could not... Could not keep up with him on that... In that first match. Um, and the third match as well. But, uh, I was not ready to give up, obviously. Uh, so... I gave it my all in the no move and of course in the NPC as well. We just really put everything we could into that into that game. Do, do these mountains line up? This is like when you found the Google car in Germany. Yeah. Something, like, like, something like that. Yeah, something yeah. like that. RC! Oh, oh, How did he know it? Oh, 
Shut the hell up. He did 2700 RC. Who is it? There's the lock. It's Blinky. It's Blinky. And the headphones come off as Blinky secures the victory. On the other side of the bracket, Fao and Consus fought for their place in the final. A roller coaster of a match between two extremely accomplished all rounders with unmatched mindsets and focus, with Consus winning 3 2 after guessing closer on a 900 km road in northern Siberia. NMPC round six. Oh my god. No. We are in Russia. To be pinpoint accurate. He has to, he has to line the road up here. And, con and <laughs> dude, Fungus is not happy with this round. He he's doesn't like, want that. Why can't you give me a Netherlands? He's looking for it. Where, he's. Here, this is it. This is it, Launders. This is it. Is Five he going to take it? Five seconds. Is it Who's going to win? Two. Oh my god. Everything one. is on him. He's in it. It's going to Oh my god. Consus locks it up. In the final, both Blinky and Consus played exceptionally. However, Consus was the only player in the tournament able to take a moving game off Blinky after some extraordinary region guessing in Greece. Ultimately, this would help crown him overall winner of the first official World Cup. Consus going Finland. Finland. It gets rural Consus in going Finland. Finland. This could easily be a Where's ton Blinky of damage. Where's Blinky going? Blinky's also going Fi Blinky's going Finland as well. Finland. Is he come down this? It's locked in. Consus! Consus. Consus. Is he the winner? Did he get it? Consus 748 damage He's and he will win. He is your world champion. Consus! The first official. He's the world, world champion. champion. He's done it from the corner. In your wildest expectations when you started playing this game and then started playing the competitive aspect of it, did you ever dream of anything like this? Not at all. But, nah, like, when I started this game was so small and I was just like enjoying playing with a few other guys on Twitch and that was it and now we're standing here in World Cup. So, what's next for Geogasa? Well, the success of the World Cup has led to a full schedule of events for 2024. The Americas Regional World Cup qualifiers took place in February, with the prodigious Jinji being crowned winner. The EMEA regionals are imminent and will take place on the 12th of April. This will feature World Cup finalists Consus and Blinky, alongside a host of both established and upcoming players. Thanks to our friends at the Geo Special, the competitive scene is ticking along nicely with a twice weekly set of tournaments for a wide pool of players. For GeoGuessr as a business, focusing on improving the learnability of the game for new players is something of a priority. Our vision now is to make uh, GeoGuessr more approachable for everyone, because it's a geography game, everybody knows a bit of geography. So our vision is to make it like not that hard. We have done some things that cater towards the new players, and then some things that cater towards the like the pro players. So we have uh, actually talked about having more a training play space where you learn more of yoga. So we have done it on our social medias uh, with the tip of the day and everything. And we want to make it more, th there are great resources like Plonkit and uh, GeoHints and everything that, that covers this. And we want to make it more accessible for everyone. So maybe in the future we have some kind of training space for players. Similarly to the French community, other non-English speaking communities have been growing most notably in Japan, with many top players beginning to emerge. As a final note, we of course have to remember that competitive GeoGuessr is only one aspect of the game, and the lasting appeal is in a community of like-minded people who are simply obsessed with learning more about the physical and human world. And from me personally, thank you to every single person in the community who has put effort into making GeoGuessr something special. And um, GeoWizard was right when he said it's more than just a game. To watch this develop firsthand over many, many years has been a privilege. I wish I could shout out every single person, but just thanks again to everyone.